is Tim Vine and this is a download from the BBC. For more information and our terms of use, visit www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Radio Scotland. Hey, digital downloaders, I'm James Christie and welcome to this week's Scotland's Funny Bits. Coming up, we've got Ross Noble, Pippa Evans, comedy writers Andy Hamilton and Guy Jenkin and singer Jodie Prenger. But first up, here comes Fred McCauley and Kirsty Drain. I wonder what they're talking about. I'd love a coffee. That's a grandy, high-energy, smooth coffee with unsalted grass-fed butter for Fred McCauley. What? Kirsty, did he say grass-fed butter? Grass-fed butter, yeah, he the did. The annoying barista said that, I heard him. He did. Grass-fed butter. He did. Right, let me see, I'm going to hand you over... A coffee? Um, a coffee with, uh, well, I can't promise it's grass-fed butter. Right. Um, but we're putting some butter in your coffee. See what you think of this. Uh, I kind of suspected this was coming, because yesterday <laughs> I said, tomorrow I'm getting butter in my coffee. You did. And I do like, oh my Ooh, goodness. it's all congealing. Oh, um, give it, uh, <laughs> give it, give that a go. <laughs> <laughs> no milk, Thank you just very butter. Much for that. Okay, milk. <laughs> this, is, this is uh, quite mysterious, but all will be revealed later. <laughs> Two can play this game, Kirsty. Smooth vanilla bean latte with extra grass fed butter for thirsty drain. <laughs> thirsty drain. <laughs> Kirsty? <laughs> Have a sip. Right, I'm going to, I'm going to, just putting in, oh God, it's just, it's a lot of butter for quite a small cup as well. <laughs> I don't this at all. Does it taste like coffee and cream? You know how the Americans drink, take cream in their coffee, is it kind of like that? Do you know, it's, I, I, I have, I've tasted it, it just tastes like coffee so far. Right. But it's the, oh. Mmm. It's mm. the, yeah. Oh yeah, that hits you right at the back of the throat. Oh. Do you know <laughs> My beloved, <laughs> this is a nasty trick to play on somebody, okay? Yeah. If you, and it doesn't happen so much these days, but what's putting me off is <laughs> if you saw somebody and they were inebriated and they they looked like they were maybe going to do the five finger spread. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They were going to be blowing chunks. <laughs> you know what would always would be guaranteed to tip them over the age, edge? If you said to them, that. Can you, would, you, would you like to have a wee drink of hot melted butter oh yeah oh you're <laughs> and right it's guaranteed if somebody's teetering on the brink cup of hot melted oh. next guest up was singer lucy k they wouldn't ask her to try that disgusting concoction would they yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 we're trying uh, butter in our coffee today it's apparently all the rage oh. um i'm just wondering maybe this could be something new that no, can don't. Help your voice fred's no, fred's fred is fred let's try it <laughs> no don't please i wouldn't let you lucy that, your throat is her instrument you, you do something wrong there i'll have a go okay yeah you're we sure, you're sure it might kill me off <laughs> do you not have to steer clear of dairy it doesn't look very nice <laughs> my stomach does churn at the thought of it oh yeah, floaters. I love that. <laughs> I know, I know. That's the, the the worst part. Do you do you take anything specific for your voice? Um, honey and hot water and lemon, yeah. just stuff like that. Um, manuka honey is really good. Yeah. What um, about port? People keep saying port's good for your voice. Um, I think it's just port drink. What about Guinness? <laughs> I drink Guinness. a lot of Guinness. Do you? So it's, yeah, full of iron. Yeah. But Not before a gig, gonna... surely. No, but after, like it's there. <laughs> <laughs> it's need. Um, yeah, that's that's nice. Please don't. No, oh, I'm so I love, the, I love the butter. <laughs> I can see an interview in years to come. So, Lucy, yeah. I, it was all going terribly well for you. The first album was just coming out. You had a tour come up and you had to cancel. Why was that? <laughs> <laughs> that's my uh, choice because of butter. And Dream. While we're on the subject of unpleasant and peculiar combinations, here's Fred McCauley and Kirsty Drain. Talking to listener, AJ. Hello, Fred. Welcome to the programme. Thank you. Whereabouts are you? I'm just up at St Cyrus. All right, how's St Cyrus? It's a wee bit cloudy, but it's it? fine. Mm-hmm. Bet it was great there when the sun was out, though, eh? Yeah, lovely. All right. Why do you put vinegar on everything? Because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all right uh, on chips. No, oh, God, I put a, bit of a whole bottle on chips. Do you? Do um... You... But when my you... son comes in when I have my beans and, and, and he'll walk past the plate and he just about chokes. Uh-huh. 
with the vinegar. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, vinegar makes me cough if I get too much of it. Are you the same? No, 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 no. I must be immune to it by now. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from chips, what was the first thing you put vinegar on? Uh, I don't know. I put it on salmon spread on toast. I put a lot of it on that as well. That's right. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely, it's lovely. I love the positivity in your voice. That's lovely. It uh, is. I put vinegar on my salmon spread on toast. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> I think it was my friend. I had a best friend called Alison Crosby in primary six. And right. It's her that started the, the vinegar on the beans. Right. Okay. It's her that started it. She her said, fault. <laughs> Alison yep. Crosby in primary six. Don't know her anymore. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What do you do with yourself, AJ? I'm a cleaner. Are you? And, and you... I use vinegar for that as well. Well, of course. <laughs> now that, that you can get a window sparkling with vinegar, can't you? I certainly can. Uh huh. Have you ever, AJ, <laughs> of an afternoon, licked a windy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on, when you're needing a vinegar, fi- a vinegar fix. A... <laughs> No, just get a packet of salt and vinegar, Chris. Remember, still to come, we've got Ross Noble, Pippa Evans and the man who brought us the sitcom Outnumbered. That's Andy Hamilton. But first, here's the winner of TV's I'd Do Anything, Jodie Prenger. And she's, of course, talking about, that's right, collie dogs. There were so many. I was in the Western Isles. Just about everybody's got a collie dog there. Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah. Get, they're intelligent, them dogs, aren't they? <sighs> I tell you. Aye. Beat me any day, I tell you. I met the local MP and he was saying his dog is so intelligent. Oh, he wasn't a dog, was he? No, 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 but he says his dog is so smart that when it comes in, it does algebra. (laughs) (laughs) His gag, I've used somebody else's gag. Oh, Uh, But good morning, Angus Brendan. And uh, (laughs) Kirsty's got some. Before, we'll get on to Calamity Jane in a minute. What have we got from the people in the office? Give me one one or two. Oh, right, okay, right. Names of pets. So James in the office, this is is a great... I know his, he's called Jake. Yes. Why? Well... Well, uh, James it's in the office. Extra leg. No, no, no. It's called Jake because of the J A at the beginning of James uh-huh. and the K E at the beginning of Kerry, which is his wife's name. Wow! I know. There I you mean, go. I, I thought it was just because Jake's quite a common dog's name anyway. Uh-huh. But no. If we'd done that, I would have had a dog called Frail. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy writers Andy Hamilton and Guy Jenkin wrote and directed the sitcom Outnumbered. They were in Scotland this week promoting their latest film, What We Did on Our Holiday. Obviously, they're used to working with awkward and childish people and felt right at home with our Fred McCall. How do you share the directing responsibility? Right. Okay. Um, well, we don't kind of comp- compartmentalise. Oh, I've got to... Uh, <laughs> compartmentalise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do the longer words. Uh, <laughs> guy does short words, adjectives. Uh, I do adverbs and... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so when, when I can't speak, then, then Andy takes over. That's right. Um, well, a lot of it's d- d- decided by by who's sort of knackered at any one yeah. point. <laughs> who wants and a biscuit? The who most? wants a biscuit? They they uh-huh. stay by the monitor, and then the, the other one who's got a little bit more energy uh-huh. goes and 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 talks to the actors. And it was a big week for Fred this week. He was hosting the Ryder Cup gala concert. As he was sharing a stage with all those big names, he of course got the A list treatment. Hi, <laughs> right. Excellent. Oh, the music was incredible. I missed, sadly, I missed Amy McDonald. Oh, right. Was she on last? She no, she was on uh, just straight after me. But my dressing room was uh, through a corridor across a big floor space, uh-huh. up another corridor, uh, through a set of steps, and then somewhere in a shed in Partick. <laughs> I think my dressing room might have actually been in the transport museum. <laughs> I was going to nick a bike and cycle back to the stage. Uh, (laughs) Next up, we've got Macaulay & Co.'s resident amateur baker, Paula Maguire. She's been attempting the technical challenge from the Great British Bake Off for the last five weeks. This next clip is niche stuff. I warn you, some of this language is inevitably pretty technical. First, you leave it for an hour at first, and then you you do some stuff, some Uh gubbins, and then you put it in and out the fridge three times. Right. um, And then afterwards, you have to leave it for another half an hour Uh in the tin before you then bake it. There'll be some people who aren't um, as familiar with the kitchen terminology as you. When you say you do some stuff, some gubbins, (laughs) could you explain that to the... (laughs) 
Um, the for, non chef for, Yeah, for those, for those who aren't actual, you know, professional bakers. Uh-huh. The gubbins you're talking about <laughs> the, the gubbins you're... Um, just rolling it, um, folding the bottom up, folding the, the top down. Right. Um, oh, those wrapping, gubbins. Those gubbins, right. wrapping it. Um, and then the end gubbins is... You're cutting it into equal beautiful squares, mm-hmm. and mine turned out really strange rectangles because I cut it the wrong way round. Right. So hence the, the inconsistent shape. <laughs> <laughs> you maybe weren't getting a proper breakers. No, well that's the thing because if somebody was coming in to buy one, you know, if they were to buy that one in the middle, they're getting a bargain. <laughs> Buying the one next to it, you're ripping them off. <laughs> No? Yeah. Did you find out what a door hook was? Um, I mean, it sounds like something you would call your partner in, a, in an argument. How are you, you door hook? <laughs> I, did, I did Google um, a picture of it. And, uh-huh. you know, it's just like a wee hook thing. So I thought, cocktail stirrer, that, that'll... So mm. I, I bent a cocktail stirrer and <laughs> used that instead. Right. I lack the basic We don't skills. want you breaking <laughs> things that you've got in the house just to participate in this. But a dough hook would be on a mixer, would it yes, not? Really? Yeah. Oh, oh, right, OK. You don't, you don't buy a dough hook and just do it with your hand. <laughs> Captain Hook. Uh, have, you, have, you have you got a food mixer? No. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> Did you see, was there a big lump of metal in the end of the dough hook when you looked at the picture? <laughs> yeah. That would have been the mixer. Or just um, just individual dough hooks. Right, OK. <laughs> so I just thought it was an implement that you might find in a car. Dough a hook. <laughs> a big dough hook. I feel okay. like a bit of a dough hook myself. <laughs> I know why you download Scotland's Funny Bits. It's for tips on deportment, high society and being posh, isn't it? That's what was up for discussion with behavioural expert Joe Wheeler and the wonderful comedian John Gavin on Friday's show. Let's hear how they got on. Have you ever been to a palace? No, I don't. No, no, no. I, I've walked past Holyrood Palace, uh-huh. but I've never actually been into a palace. You've not? No. OK. Not I even a feel, gin palace? Not even a gin palace. Um, <laughs> you must have been into no, a gin palace. I, it's, it's, I don't feel that my life would be enriched in any sort of way by going into a palace. I've been to Hamilton Palace, <laughs> which is a really rubbish nightclub in yeah. Hamilton. Um, that's what I was that's, after. That Hamilton Palace, um, there's also the Water Palace in Hamilton, which has got a flume. Mm-hmm. It's not really a real palace, though. Um, I think palaces are also names quite a lot of restaurants quite often use palace in the their Jade titles. Palace. There's yeah. The Jade Palace. There's the Jade Palace. But I don't like Chinese food, so I wouldn't right. go in there either. No. 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 What, what is your idea of a posh person? Um, someone who drinks tea and reads the Daily Mail and is perhaps not that welcoming of other cultures. Drinks that, tea. That's a, that's a polite way of saying it. Interesting. Yeah, Joe, yes, Joe. Joe, darling, would you concur? No, not at all. I, I'm, I'm quite incensed here, actually. I was going to have to jump in before I was even invited. Um, I think everybody's idea of posh is slightly different, particularly in this day and age where we don't all have a large country residence uh, to, to kind of outwardly display uh, our standing in the world. Um, I had this lovely definition from somebody that said they thought they were posh because they'd never dunked their ciabatta in their vichyssoise. <laughs> um, but from a lot of people, it's simply uh, somebody who is eloquent, considerate and cultured. And within that, considerate is one of the major words, somebody who does think about other people and doesn't look down on others. But is that not just manners? Surely posh doesn't equal manners. In fact, no. I know from experience it doesn't always. No, and money doesn't mean posh either. Mm. Yeah, very good point. So you can be poor, you can be broken posh, can't you? Absolutely. A lot of people consider posh to be somebody who is well-spoken, has good manners, well-presented table manners, uh, and eats at the table. Mm. Ah. And eats at the table, but instead of the tea in front of the TV. Well, yes. We we had, um, well, Claire, the, the now late Clarissa Dixon writes has often been a guest on the programme and for me this was kind of the the ultimate in posh she said we said Clarissa have you ever tasted swan and she said yes and we said what does it taste like and she said well it tastes a bit like mohen and uh, we (laughs) (laughs) just had a text in from Jeannie Edgar I don't know if either of you would agree with this but she says someone who is posh is someone who puts their fairy liquid under the sink (laughs) 
<laughs> you see, the thing is, you talk about posh and putting the fairy liquid underneath the sink, but you would probably consider somebody to be posh if they had horses, played polo, uh, that sort of thing. They in which case, cubes. they are like they probably <laughs> eat sugar cubes. Yeah, they're likely to have a kitchen that is total chaos with bits of horse tack everywhere and boots and dogs and you know probably a kitchen which your mother would be sh you know, would consider shabby. Um, but you would call them posh simply because they've got the horses. I'd probably call them posh because it was the servant I had to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> John, we're definitely not letting you go without really testing how you'd react in different situations. Okay. Let's call the butler and see how you feel. Butler? Sir, the table is all but laid. Remind me, where should I lay the salad forks? Mm, well, John, what do you think? I don't like salad. So don't bother. <laughs> Just leave it. It's only possible Just leave it. Ah, yeah, it's too fancy. <laughs> too Just fancy. Keep to the rabbits. But if you were to hazard a guess, <laughs> when the Duchess of Cambridge and Prince William arrived earlier, the Duchess didn't curtsy to Princess Beatrice. Should I report this to Her Majesty? Oh, John. No. 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 Better get away no. with it. So, but hang on, Twitter a bit. Do you say, put a thing on Twitter about it? Do you say, oh, she's some character? <laughs> Get her. I love this time of the week. Channel 4's announcement that Jeremy Paxman's joining them for their general election coverage pales into comparison to this week's Five Things guests. Pacman's well and truly trumped with comedians Pippa Evans and fresh from Inverness, Ross Noble. Morning, guys. Morning. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us here on Macaulay & Co. Now, um, you've been playing Ross at um, Inverness. I was, yes. Tonight you've got the Clyde Auditorium. I am, yes. Glasgow tonight. And it's, uh, it's uh, the Ryder Cup. I'm not quite as excited about it as you are, to be honest. Are because, you not a big golf fan? Well, because, look, you can see the venue from here, can't you? See the, see the armadillo out there? That's where I'm playing tonight. Yeah. Night, right, see the hotel next to it there, uh -huh. where I could be staying. I could have a two-minute walk to the stage. That's full, isn't it? So I'm staying quite a long way away from the Ryder Cup. But do yeah. you like? No, it no, no, not from the Ryder Cup. <laughs> <laughs> from I, the auditorium. <laughs> from the auditorium. I don't want to be anywhere near the golf. I'm sick of it. It's ridiculous. Really? And then I'm doing two nights in Edinburgh mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow and the night afterwards, and uh, I'm staying uh, in Peebles. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no, indeed. Yeah. Um, um, apart from the the fact, people's is, people's is nice. Oh no! no get... Don't get me wrong. I I love. Be I have nothing against people's. Dig oh, yourself out of that, Ross. Come on. Yeah, no, come on. I I like the people's. <laughs> I'm a fan of the people's. Unfortunately, when you're playing two nights in Edinburgh, it's not the most convenient. I'm just saying yeah. because quite a be lot of people, drive, drive back. quite I'd a lot that. of people in terrible clothing <laughs> that like watching. <laughs> Men in terrible clothing, <laughs> hitting tiny balls around the place. How are you getting around Scotland? Are you driving yourself? I am, yes, I am driving. Although I'm thinking of stealing a golf cart out of spite. <laughs> you might get around faster. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not? I'm, not, I'm not a fan of golf, I'll be honest with you. And that's just made it worse. I like it. I'm really into this Ryder Cup. I, mean, yeah. I don't know much about golf at all, but it's I'm enjoying it. It's getting you excited, it. is it? Why? Uh, because of the you pumpkin know ceremony. Okay. The blazers. The blazers oh, oh, are nice. Okay. So what you're describing is the fashion mm. and all the stuff around it. Mm -hmm. The fact that the actual thing itself is dull. And the <laughs> names. Don't forget the names. Bubba and Webb. Yeah, but you can just you can you can watch an American. You can watch Jerry Springer for that. I like there's it. Bob and there's Webb over there. <laughs> now we're going to start with a quote from the week. Can you have a guess at this story? There was some confusion between staff about payment. Um, most actors in most fringe shows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be, Ross. Yes, what? Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, go on. No, <laughs> I've got no idea. What the headline was about is Surrey Police spokeswoman on QPR defender Stephen Colkner's brief arrest this week, having been wrongly accused of stealing a tub of Philadelphia from Tesco. How embarrassing. How, he, he did what? He stole a tub of Philadelphia from Tesco, except he didn't. He was nearly arrested and wow. um, it was a misunderstanding. Why would you get arrested for stealing a tub of Philadelphia? It's free, well, isn't it? You're just allowed to take it's it. It's free. Yeah. It's, are you sure he hadn't just bought some sort of Anthony Worrell Thompson um, cookbook? And it says at the start of every Anthony Worrell Thompson, <laughs> steal these items from Tesco. It, it borrow, was borrow them. that he was stealing, I think, at the time. No, I think it was actually it was, cheese. It, it was actually uh, reduced coleslaw. 
Oh. It was it was half price cold snow. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. I thought it was but, cheese as well. Uh, well, well. I do very well at uh, at uh, topical based things from uh, two years ago. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, no, I think I think he might have had a bit of cheese as well. I know Anthony thinks yeah. he's got away. You know, he's like, finally, they're going to stop talking about it. And then you get put on a panel show, Ross, and you bring it back up. And poor uh, Anthony has to live with his Anthony. Anthony. Well, well, the thing is, though, that Anthony took the heat off uh, Maidley, didn't he? Because yeah, up until there, Maidley was the go-to guy for uh, you know stealing from supermarkets, and he took it off Winona Ryder. That's true. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. oh there's, yeah. There's there's before Winona Ryder, there's a dinner party I'd like to, uh, I'd like to go to. <laughs> and you'd you'd want to have that dinner party in someone else's house, probably, very, yeah, and then very steal much your so. things. You sit, sit around going, see all these canopies didn't pay for any of this. <laughs> Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, <laughs> that's so great um, this is the story of David's uh, wonderful David Cameron our wonderful leader who um, who has uh, put his foot in it by doing the classic I mean, we thought, think they would have learnt from Gordon uh, the classic microphone on saying the wrong thing uh, and saying that the Queen purred down the line uh, when, she, uh, when he told her about uh, the result of the referendum uh, and that he'd never heard someone so happy uh, apart from of course all the people who enjoy David Cameron putting his foot in it on the breaking <laughs> of this I, story I love the fact that, that the fact that she purred down the line because she was so happy that the union was together apparently if Scotland had, had gone if there had been independence, she would have just gone <laughs> 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 like a, an angry, like she was bringing up a fur ball. She'd have got really angry. I, I sort of think she does just uh, she doesn't like talking to David. So I think she actually put her cat on the line. Uh, <laughs> so her cat was actually there. <laughs> oh, poor David. Poor ha, David. Oh, oh, either... Or did she just hang up? Is that what it, you know? Mm. What I mean? mm. That's true. It was still ringing. That's what it was. <laughs> He's there. He went. Well, it's all happening. We're we're in here. And she's like. And then he put the phone down. And yeah, he misunderstood. Up. Have either of you met the Queen? You know, in these comedy galas where you get to meet royalty. No, oh. no but I did work at Buckingham Palace when I was uh, nineteen. My one of my summer holiday jobs. I worked in the shop in the back. Oh, pretty exciting oh. stuff. I, I was what there. What do they sell I, in the shop? Uh, mainly things with the Queen's face on it. Stamps, uh, just stamps. Which, which, exactly, it doesn't make any sense because everyone gives all the tourists give you their money, which has a picture of the Queen on it, for things <laughs> with a picture of the Queen on it. So, guys, you could save yourself a lot of time and an entrance fee. <laughs> I, I, I didn't expect to do this, but I saw the Queen a couple of months ago pass me on the Royal Mile in a car. And I, just, I was going to say, just wondering. I, she was, was she flyer, she flyering for she the tattoo, bu- was she? She was just, come and see the She's it's gone to a fudge-making my, demonstration. It's all of my soldiers. There you go. We put on a hell of a show. Do you know what I did? I cried. I no, just started no. crying. Oh, I found it so. quite over. She, but she was just nice. Is that how much you resent paying for her to be kept in... It could have been tears of frustration. I yeah. think I would cry because because uh, I love her, I, and I think like when she dies, <laughs> it's, she's like been in our in our in our world for so long that it's going to be a real bizarre thing when she finally dies. Her and Delia, when they die, the world will end. Well, I, I was in mm. uh, I was in Australia when the Queen Mum died, and I turned on the radio, and then bloke went, "All right, we've got the uh, surf report now coming up," and he gave the surf report. He went. And also, uh, tragic news, Queen Mom's dead. Oh, no. oh, brilliant. That prioritises things, doesn't it? <laughs> Tesco. Uh-oh. Oh, that, the Tesco's, who apparently are rubbish at working <laughs> out their uh, at working out their finances. They, they over... They, what was it, 250 million? million they said, oh, How yeah, yeah, that? we're definitely going to... Uh, we're definitely going to get 250 million by the end of the next quarter... But what they hadn't banked on is Anthony Waddle Thompson, Thompson. <laughs> Winona Ryder and Richard Maidley all have uh, loyalty cards <laughs> and that's why they didn't that's why they didn't make any cash. So yeah, so they're all, they're in trouble. They sacked the fella now, haven't they? They've sacked him and they've yeah. got a new fella in. And apparently he's got a calculator, <laughs> this new guy. Yeah. There was a gap where they didn't have a financial officer or head of finance. But you'd think Sounds like the last be... five years. <laughs> <laughs> you'd think there would be someone else to in the finance department, in accounts, to kind of make sure well, what's just happening. A, just a YTS lad, you know, just get yeah. somebody in and go out. You know, you can't mess it up any more than the rest of them have. Well, yeah. precisely, Ross. Yeah. Right. So what's happening? Do we know what's happening with the... Um, Big apologies. Well, that's not it's not good enough, is no, it? No, it's not good yeah. enough, Ross. It's not. Big apologies, and they've got a new finance guy coming in. Right. So uh-huh. why why can't... I mean, for me, this is just positive thinking. So what they've done is overestimated 
So, well, but they only estimated, right? So, so surely they're allowed to do that. Are they not? They're not allowed to because I mean. I'd love to tell myself, Pips, this year you're going to earn 250 million just to give myself that extra confidence. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then if I fail to do that, then that's just, you know, why, why is that so bad? And maybe 250 million isn't really that much. Maybe. You know, in terms of Tesco, yeah, Tesco yeah, money. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. The money but without the Queen on the, just do, the Tesco money. Do you have shareholders, though? That's the, that's the question. <laughs> I have a lot of shareholders, yeah. Ross. I mean, I was thinking about floating myself on the open <laughs> markets. How much do you think you get? I don't know. I just quite like the idea of floating about a market. <laughs> yeah. I just want to ring that bell uh, on Wall Street. Yeah, I think the share value d- did take a dive. It did, it did. But listen, Mine, mine certainly had when I started slagging off the Ryder Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Empty head. Uh, well, in a in a week of people uh, forgetting about money, uh, Ed did his big old speech because of the Labour Party conference, uh, and Ed, uh, lovely Ed, um, forgot to talk about the Britain's deficit and how we're going to cope with it, and he blamed this on the fact that he's doing this thing that all the politicians like to do now, which is uh, not having any notes for your speech and just learning them. Um, uh, so he just he forgot that bit. So he said, "Oh, we, oh, I just, oh, I forgot it." And he said, uh, "What he does is he he tries he tries to write a speech." This is what he said: "I try and write a speech, and then I use it as as the basis for what I want to say." So he tries. What well, he says, "I try to write." What he means is, I don't write a speech. I fail to write a speech, so I just improvise it. Uh, and uh, I mean, I love improvisation, obviously, but um, I probably wouldn't rely on it at a key moment addressing the nation. You know, if you start riffing. I mean, imagine if the Queen started uh, riffing for her speech. Um, she probably just. Start Pairing. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, she's amazing. She always does it in one take. The Queen, one 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 take she's wonder. One, one take, take wonder. wonder wow. Yeah. I mean, speaking from personal experience, it's one of those things where if you are just going to, you know, go on stage and follow an idea, you, it can end up in some pretty unusual places. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I, on a nightly basis, find myself, I find myself saying stuff and just going. Why Why did that just come out of my face? <laughs> and that's fine, you know, because that's why people come to see me. But, you know, yeah, Miliband is trying to lead the country. Yeah, and, and also those, those speeches are the speeches people remember you for. You know, the, the We'll Fight on the Beaches were not, was not improvised. I, I doubt I, I, um, I Have a Dream was improvised. <laughs> I Have a Dream, and in that dream, some ladies dance naked, and oh, what am I saying? It might be okay, though, just if people started <laughs> riffing, you know, a yeah. riffing policy ha- for all politicians. <laughs> but that, I, I fight on the beach, we shall fight them on the beaches. Yeah. We shall fight them. We'll fight them in the streets we'll in, in Nottingham. Alleyway. We shall put on stilts. <laughs> We shall put on stilts and we shall fight them by kicking them with the extra leverage that the stilt allows. <laughs> you, have you, you've gone off piste here, haven't you, Winston? Yes, I have. I have in my hand here, Chamberlain, I have in my hand here a piece of a letter from Adolf Hitler. I have in my hand here a small rabbit that I have pulled from a hat. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, I like it. I just, But you know what? I just think, you know, Miliband, I mean, you know what's good about him, right, is the fact that he clearly... Like, he's rubbish. He's just the (laughs) worst. He's rubbish at speeches. He's not convincing. Even though he was, he's just off, you know, I'm off script. I'm just talking from the heart. Everything he says sounds like it's read off a card. And it's just every, it's just like, I'm just going to look. And he always says, look, all the time. He just, and I love it. I love the fact that. Justine has started saying, look as well now his wife uh, his wife oh that was so embarrassing up. he went in for a wee kiss this week oh yeah she she oh I hate that she, yeah, yeah. she yeah. turned him she dingied him oh. and, she, and he finished the speech and then she comes on the stage if I finished a gig and my missus <laughs> walked on the stage I'd be like whoa there yeah. I don't want to say yeah, I would be like so, something's obviously happened uh, what, oh, yeah. the, the children alright I'm working love <laughs> come on Virgin on the Ridiculous ah right yes so this is uh, Richard Branson who's just said, you can have as much holiday as you want. He said to his staff, well, ah, here's the thing, right? He said to some of his companies, they can have as much uh, free time as they want. They, they can just, you know, have a holiday if they feel, you know, if they say fit. wonderful. It's good, but he's only done it with certain, like his own, it's like one of his, like his personal family company. That's right. And then like his chief executives, it's, you know, they're all the sort of high end brands. I think anyone that's working in like, you know. The airline. No, I think even that's probably, I think it's like the phone shops, you know. Yeah. It's just like take as much time off as you want. Uh, I'd like, I'd like to buy a phone. I, I, I say I'd like to buy a phone. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yeah. the, um, it only applies to 170 staff. 
170. Wow. 170. Well, he's, probably, he's probably testing it out, though, isn't he, first, to check that it does work. So it's a sort of a big gesture, but only done to a small amount of people. Mm, Pippa, do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it would instill loyalty if you could think, take holidays? I think it's a great idea because uh, because people... It's exactly um, as, you know, you, they say, people don't really work 9 to 5 anymore. People work 3 a.m. till 2 a.m. Uh, and then they find they have... Uh, two days a week where they don't really have anything to do so better to sort of work in that way than uh, to have to do nine to five every day and then have your two weeks holiday off i mean yeah. apparently he was uh, inspired by netflix who do it uh, which i imagine they have to have that time off because they get addicted to all the box sets <laughs> yeah, yeah good point ross have you ever been in a job where <laughs> you're, you're... <laughs> you ever been in a job Still stop. I'll, I'll stop you there <laughs> have you ever been in a job no i've never had a job in my life have you not no no i started doing stand-up when i was 15 and then i just it was my job not even I, a saturday job no i was a paper boy when I was a child, and I once, uh, I once uh, handed out flyers for an American uh, diner, uh, but I was, <laughs> but I was on stilts. I genuinely was on stilts. That wasn't, a, wasn't some Winston Churchill inspired thing. Um, yeah, I was I, a paper boy or paper girl, nice. actually, bizarrely, uh, before the change. Um, and I, uh, I was so bad at it that I used to sleep in my school uniform so I could get up and just go and do it and then come back and I got fired in the end for Why? just never because I just never turned up on time I was rubbish because I, I found it really boring it's, it's really uninspiring being that's a why, paper child that's why I never got a job it's boring isn't it why would you think it through but to know from such a young age that you didn't want a job and you wanted to stand up that's pretty driven Ross yeah, or incredibly lazy mm-hmm. you know that's the way I tend to live my life but no it's, it's, I don't I don't understand that I've never I've never had a boss and I've never, there's been people now just smashing their radios with hammers. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never had a boss, never had to. So, yeah, if I, um, but equally, it's one of those things where if I decide, hey, I'll have a, I'll have a month off, I just don't earn any money. So, you know. It's, my uh, it's, my it's, best it's, job ever was taking old people on holiday. So it was basically a job where I got to go on oh, holiday. Lovely. So I organised holidays to uh, hotels that had like entertainers and things like that. It was just the best to just oh, hang out good. with loads of old ladies. I thought you were going to say I took them, uh, took them up Everest, uh, <laughs> whitewater rafting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did the Great Wall of China. Some of them came back. I do admire you guys, though, because I think if I worked for myself, it would be a disaster. Mm, it is. I work for myself. It's, it's, it actually takes why? motivation. Why? I was my own boss. Why, why would, it, why would yeah. it be a disaster? Because I'm always telling myself what to do and I never do it. So I'm always, uh, yeah. I need the routine of a job, I guess, right, to I get up and go in. Yeah, yeah. So I'm always telling myself, today you're going to do this. And you, I don't do any of them. So I'm really, Robert, I'm a really disrespectful employee to myself, right. I think. Well, what what I tend to do is I, I sort of, uh, you know, like with the tour, like the tour I'm on at the, at the moment, you know, I'll book myself a tour that lasts for like six months. And then it's one of those things where... Right. There's nothing that motivates you more than thinking, oh, I've got 3,000 people in Glasgow waiting for me. Yeah. Right, that's I'll try so, that. That sort of... <laughs> I'll try that. Yeah, book your tour now. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So just, that's all you've got to do. you just got to book stuff in and then go, oh, I really have to turn up right. for that. Hmm. Okay, it's a, it's, life strategy it's, it's a very, from Ross Noble. I should write a book. <laughs>